I'm back with another video surrounding the Beatles' Let It Be and Get Back sessions, and today I'm going to do a deep dive on the argument that took place between George and Paul here on Pop Goes the 60s. On our way back home. This image has become a meme for the entire Let It Be Get Back sessions and added to the idea that everything about this project was miserable. And uh, But a closer look at the evidence shows a more fuller picture of how these guys really work together. On Monday, January 6th, the Beatles reconvened for more sessions for the Get Back, Let It Be project. And the day starts out slow. There's, they're meeting and discussing what to do about the live show. And this, is, this goes on for quite a long time. When they get down to business, they start working on John's Don't Let Me Down, which they work on for a good part of the day. And then uh, when they're kind of tired of that, John suggests they move on to another song. And then next song is The Two of Us. Now, Two of Us was a much different song at this part, at this time. The song that we know, this acoustic song, originally was electric and had a very different feel to it. Now, in the film, uh, you'll notice that when this argument takes place between George and Paul, the song that appears that they're working on is I've Got a Feeling, but that's not so. It's actually The Two of Us. So that galloping intro you hear is very different than the release version and to my ears as I listen to these rehearsals, this is not going smoothly and they're getting a little bit frustrated with this session because it's, the song isn't really coming together very well. Uh, but it's not, it's not together, so that it's not sounding together, so we even on, play until we, or we can stop we and say it's not bit. together. Yes, then you've got to carry on until they get together. Well, I never know what to say to that, you know, because what I want to say is, you know, now come on and play, you know, and but I can't, I know, you yes, know, and we get into that one. Okay. <laughs> so here we go. But, you know, you know, I mean, well, I'm tell us something about that, you know. I can't make it beyond that, you know. It's like, it's, it's complicated now. So, see, if we can get it simpler, and then complicate it where it needs complications, but it's complicated it's not in the bit. Complicated, but, it's no, but you, I mean, you know. I mean, I'll play just the chords if you like, and no, no, and come then on. You're always going to try to do that. I'm annoying when I say that. I'm trying to help you know, but I always hear myself like, annoying you, and I'm trying to. No, you're not I, I get so I can't you say. Don't annoy me but you know what I mean? Well, you know, we do this then, I mean, and then that, I don't know. do it on film either. I don't know if can do it on camera. Okay, the conflict here has to do with their working methods. Paul is trying to lay down the song with the basic chords and get those figured out, get the song all laid out with just the basics, while George is adding improvisational notes along the way. And that's, this, is, this is slowing things down, it's making it hard to get the main structure down. I don't mind. Yeah. But doesn't everyone agree that it's quite, that it's confused yeah. at the moment? So all I'm trying to say is, it, it's like let's get, let's get the confusion, unconfused, then confused. But you know, like we're just that's what we've been doing all afternoon. Like, this is why we're not getting anything done. You know, we're just go, rolling on with it. We've only got 12 more days. So like you know, we've really got to do this methodically. This one, like unconfused, and then a bit more confused, then a bit more. And now that's try it. this drum in here. Try this drum in there. Now, okay, let's stop and go look into this bit. Well, I've got an idea. I should vamp because I've got to sing. And it's hard going. Doing that. But it's annoying, you know. Okay, and can you let do me that? Do it. I'll just do, do that. kind of vamping. I'm just going to drag through and I'll try to can the camera. Yeah. So even trying to lighten up the mood by bringing up a candid camera doesn't even work. So they're aware of the cameras being present and that they're rolling and being recorded. Playing. Yeah, but you've got to play in order to find which fits and which doesn't. Mm -hmm. You well, see, that's what you can do. I'm thinking of this one above a thing, like, which is what we're playing the solo. We'll improvise in the solo, but we'll play strict chords and strict rhythms yeah. while the vocals. But the rhythm is strict. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I don't want to say it because I really just hear myself as being the only one saying it. All this time, I can really just sort of sit there like, what are you saying? I don't want to get this here. I don't want to get any support or anything. So I just think, oh, well, fuck it. But don't, no, come on, look, you know. The galloping bit, and I'll just bam. Look, you know, the, <laughs> no, it's not like that, no, is it? You see, that's it. It's like, when, we've got to do this. We've really got to sort out this, because we're, this is, we're like, this is the one, you know. Now, we're rehearsing, and we're trying to, like, get it together for the TV show. So we really, like you said, we've only been through four numbers. Mm. Yeah. Well, so we've probably got to get some system to get through, like, 20. 30 and no more and I've learned all. And it's probably going to be like sculpture so that we get all the chords so we can v all vamp them all. Yeah. Then we can like all play every solo we need. <coughs> you know, but like, like, you know what I mean? It's got to sound as though it's improving. But yeah, well, it actually, it sounded to me that for me, it was a waste of my time playing when we started it today. I mean, I just I started remembering then what it was getting into the other day after playing it for about an hour and a half. And uh, suddenly, you know, I start finding that my, the what I'm doing is starting to have something, you know, have some structure to it. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, you know, because it's like, you know, I mean, it's just that that way of doing it, you know, puts me off the way I'm trying to do it. Well, that's and, what, you know, I, that's all, man. You know, I can only do me, you know, that one way. Well, however I do, you know. Yeah. Let's do another song. No, come on, we just let it go. Do you want to do Max and Silver Hammer? <coughs> well, let's do this, because I mean. We're gonna come to this or whatever it is. And the thing is just let's try and think what it what it's you vaguely gonna be a system. I think we've wasted a lot of time. Okay, I wanted to play that whole stretch of this argument because a lot of people think and people have written that this is the argument that caused George to leave the band and walk out. That actually happened four days later on the 10th, on Friday. So this particular argument. Uh, you can see how they work their way through as in the beginning they're really walking on eggshells they don't want to come out and say what they really feel it's getting reaching ahead and then when Paul brings up the Hey Jude incident where he asked George to not play something that George wanted to offer to that song George that struck a nerve with him and that clearly is probably a bigger deal than maybe we knew about that him feeling like maybe he was uh, not welcome to add his his instrumentation onto Hey Jude so as that kind of simmers down, Paul says, well, let's work on another song. And George says, no, no, let's, 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 let's keep going on this one. And then he suggests, well, would you like to work on Maxwell Silver Hammer, which is a Paul song. So they're trying to kind of work things out here. And then John says, ah, nah, let's get this song done. We gotta get this done anyway, come on, guys. So clearly this session has not gone well and they've made very little progress in like the hour and a half that they've been working on this song. So John's contribution at this time is, is to suggest that 
whoever song it is should really run the rehearsal. So he's basically backing Paul here. And John starts talking about how that should be. And then Paul suggests something here that we can hear on tape uh, about him being very uncomfortable in that position. No one's good enough. You'd be the boss. I, and I have been for like a couple of years. And we all have been. Yeah, but for this, and no one has. Well, that's what we decided, didn't it? Okay, they take a much needed tea break at this point, and they then they bring out some beer, and they decide to give the two of us another go. Uh, George is more receptive to Paul's ideas, and Paul backs down a bit, allowing the song to develop on its own. So, so that's that's positive, and they go through uh, several more run-throughs and a couple very good takes. And it's, it's just come together a little bit more once they settle some differences. Now, at the end of these rehearsals of the two of us, we find out another reason why Paul might be a little bit irritable. There you have a good chunk of what happened on day three of these rehearsals for Let It Be and Get Back. Uh, the song, the two of us, obviously morphed into quite a bit of a different song, switching from an electric version to an, a largely acoustic version, where John and Paul switched to acoustic guitars and then George played bass on the low notes of a six-string guitar. And that seemed to work much better when they did that, made those changes as the song grew. Now, this argument, I never... The way I look at this argument is if there was a camera set up for every one of their albums, we would probably see something just like this in every album. We know that during Rubber Soul, John and Paul had a huge row. In, during the Revolver sessions, Paul walked out once. And during the White Album, Ringo walked out. So this is not unprecedented. I mean, anybody and all of you watching out there who have been in a band and know the creative process and the egos involved in band um, camaraderie, it's not always the easiest thing, and tempers do flare. So this, I don't think, is that big of a deal. There are bigger problems going on with the Beatles that we'll discuss in other videos. So some of the reasons the Beatles were having problems when they started this whole project was lack of preparation. I mean, they came into this project, it was supposed to be a TV show, and they originally were going to do songs live of the, from the White Album. But realizing that we get bored with those songs because they already did them, they wanted to do new, new songs. So they didn't have the TV show figured out. They didn't know where the live show was going to be. They did not rehearse these songs before they came to the studio. For the White Album, at least, they, they hung out at George's house, going through all the songs, which were recorded, as you know, the Esher demos. That would have probably helped coming into this project. So they had no consensus, really, until like the last week of January on all these things. I think the Beatles thought they could come up with some grand idea for a TV show, live show, just show up, and it would all fall into place. But that's not how it works. And they didn't put the time in to make it work properly in advance. That's why you have these issues and these, this stress going on, because they were pressed for time. The clock was running, all this stuff was rented, money was going out the door. Things actually did fall into place. Uh, but at a price. And we'll talk about those issues in another video here on Pop Goes the 60s. Oh.